What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs and today I'm very excited to be doing Lumberjack Turtle. I feel like hacking a little bit so we're going to exploit this new machine on Try Hack Me. We're supposed to learn about Log4j exploitation and I'm show, going to show you how easy it is for you to test for Log4j vulnerability then exploit it. Then the second part we should end up in a Docker container environment. Then I'll show you how if you have mounts within your system Someone inside of a container can go get on your system and read your files and even own the system. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Our IP address is 10, 10 89. So first, of course, we go to our Kali Linux system and run an nmap, minus ASV, minus AC, and on that IP address. Um, you can do on all ports, but for now, I'm just going to do uh, a service version scan and we should know version of everything that shows up and also we run some default scripts within nmap so this shouldn't take too long then once it's done we'll move on all right so as you can see quickly nmap finished and we can actually see port 22 we don't have any keys we don't have any passwords so we move on port 80. this one says it's a nagios uh, it looks like a nagios user agent or something like that we can investigate what this is but since it's port 80 why not just visit it on a browser? All right, looks like we're being trolled here, saying there's nothing to see, but we don't move on until we are, we are good. So let's run GoBus on this thing, and GoBus will try to look for some directories for us. Test our GoBuster here, and then of course, we just need to change our IP address. I like to use the sec list, word list, because it's just nicer that way. This is the medium.txt. Usually this one catches a lot for me. So. Let's run go bust in the background here and see if it finds something. I didn't specify any threads, maybe I should have, but uh, let's see what it finds. And while go bust is running, let's also enumerate our website further for the obvious. Do we have robots.txt? No, we don't. All right, what's on the page source for this thing? Just in case we see something interesting happening. And sure enough, this. Really nothing there. So this thing is not talking much. And GoBus is still going. We see a slash error. Let's hope we see something there. Really, it's just a bunch of nothing. All right, let's 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 look at this request via burp suite. Maybe we will be able to see something interesting. So I'm going to just use uh, my burp suite browser. This is the browser that comes with burp. For now, interception is off because I just want it to load. All right, then let's turn interception on and just refresh the same page. And there we go. So looking at the request here, it's just really a generic GET request. <laughs> Nothing exciting here. Let's send this to repeater so we can mess with it. All right. So one thing that we see is um, reference to Java on the main page. It was talking about like uh, grabbing a cup of Java. And from the room itself, grab a cup of Java. From the room itself, we know it's a log4j room. So this is where the fun begins. How do we test for log4j vulnerabilities? Uh, if you go to the internet and just Google log4j, uh, you see a lot of articles. I like this one better. It will explain to you what log4j is and what uh, the vulnerability looks like. And also, it will give you like a proof of concept, something silly like here. Like, hey, this is what you can put in your payload. So if you ever see a website and you want to test it for log4j and, it's, uh, and you already have the request captured in burp, here's what you can quickly do to see if it actually works or not. You can mess with any of these headers here, even starting with the control thing here. But I'll start with the user agent. You can just remove the user agent and maybe put the payload. And then, of course, this needs to be your IP address. We are looking for our tunnel IP address here. All right. Let's try to do a simple connection uh, back to us on port, I don't know. Let's use a DNS port 53. Right. And we come back here. If it's vulnerable to look for J, it will reach out back to us. Netcat minus L V and P on 53. Let's just listen here. So I'm testing the user agent. If, if if it's vulnerable, it will reach back to us. 
so I can send that. And sure enough, this one didn't work. All right, user agent didn't work. The accept one here, we can remove the, all this and just give us, let's paste what we had. All right, now we moved on to the accept. We'll even go to encoding and everything. Let's send this one. This one didn't do anything here, but let's go back and see if it actually reached back to us. Uh, yeah, it did. Look at all this. So this is just a simple way of testing if Log4j is there. Just send uh, the payload in any of the headers. Sometimes you can even spam all of them at once and you see which one is working. I did them one at a time here. So the accept is actually uh, vulnerable, which is nice. Because then now we know for sure this is vulnerable to Log4j. But of course we cannot do anything here. So we need to stop this and then go back. All right, so we know this is where we are putting our payload. What we can do is let's go back and set up a JNDI server. If you don't know what that is, I'll show you here in a second. All right, so for us to exploit log4j completely, I like the, to use this rogue JNDI. People use all kinds of uh, different ones, but this one is the one that I've used on vCenter. On this channel, you probably have seen it, but this is going to be a malicious LDAP server. This, this is going to be serving our malicious Java code and allow us to actually uh, execute remote commands. So what all we need to do is git clone this repository, which I already did in, in my system here. I have it in my folder called vCenter. So let's stop this. So I have the rogue JNDI directory. Just, that's just the rep repository. And of course, you need to set it up the same way that they, they show you here. Like, hey, by the way, you're going to need Maven installed this version of Maven and also uh, Java on your system, which you already have. And once you have it, all you need to do is just run the command. And this will host our malicious server and then allow us to exploit log4j. So I'm just going to paste the command here. But of course... Our host that we are targeting in this case is going to be our victim, which we just remove the old IP and paste a new one. All right, so our victim machine, and then we can put whatever command that we want here. Instead of our NS lookup, we should just do something like a ping, and then um, our IP address. We do a ping because it's just a simple command that we can see if it comes back or not. And I did this last time too. And we want to ping our tunnel IP address so that all this traffic can come back. All right. So what's going to happen here is if I hit enter, it will set up our LDAP server that's ready to ping. All our victim has to do is reach out back to us on LDAP. And of course, the ping command will be executed on, on, the, on the victim. So here is our, our server and it's ready for, for connections. Let's do a TCP dump here. All right. I already did this before, as you can see. So we're going to run TCP dump to listen for IC, ICMP traffic on the tunnel interface and see if we actually get any packets. So when we go to our victim, we need to send an LDAP command back here. So that means we want it to come back to port 1389, then if it does and if it works, we should see it delivering the payload, in this case, a ping command. And we should also see ping uh, over here. So let's go here, instead of that port, we want 1389. Okay, according to our documentation here, we can just send it like this, LDAP server is equals to then the reference. I'm going to use the Tomcat, because that's the one that worked for me last time. And they Explain them here. Tomcat leads to remote code ex execution via unsafe reflection. So that's the one that we want in this case. But I, I guess others will work. So this one is wait waiting. Our um, TCP dump is ready. Going back to BRIP suite, you see that I'm, I modified this to accept. In this case, it's just LDAP, not LDAP S. Uh, going to our IP address on 1389. Then the O is equal to Tomcat. So with this, we should see ping requests coming back. So send that. And going back here, here is our ping request right away. I've sent four, but of course you get a bunch because the request gets repeated a couple of times. 
All right. And it, of course, the payload was delivered. So all we need to do now is weaponize this and get a reverse shell. So what can we do? Maybe we should use Netcat reverse shell. So if you're not familiar with Netcat, you can just go maybe, here's an article from Hacking Articles. We can run a Netcat command on the victim and have it send as a shell. And this will explain how you catch your shells. So on the victim, we'd like to run Netcat to reach out back to us on port 444. Then of course, we would like to start a list now on port 444. So let's stop this. Clear that. So instead of a ping, I would like to get a reverse shell here. It will execute a command bin bash to give us um, a shell. So it's minus E. Then of course the IP address that we want here is going to be our Kali Linux IP address. Which is our tunnel. All right. So Netcat, assuming Netcat is there, if Netcat is not there, we need to move maybe to Python, or we can just get a simple bash uh, reverse shell. But for now, I'll, I'll start with Netcat since it's a Linux system. All we need to do is listen on port 44 now. So let's stop TCP dump. Netcat minus LVNP 444. And then, of course, we are now listening. All right. So we have a listener. Our payload is waiting. All you need to do is go back here and rerun the same request. And hopefully this time we actually get a reverse shell. All right, we sent it. There it is. The payload got delivered. Now, moment of truth. Sure enough, we got a connection. If I say ID, I mean it's root. That's interesting. LS minus LA. Oh, damn it. We are not really in a, in a, in a system. Remember from my video last week, we saw this Docker environment file and we said this is an indicator that you're inside of a container. So we are really uh, not, we haven't owned the system yet. So we can, so question, what is the first flag? So since we're in a container and knowing how people create these things, there's going to be a flag in here. I didn't see anything here. Is it a hidden file? No. Okay. So let's find, let's locate. I don't know if they have locate inside of a container. That would be interesting. We don't have it, but find starting from the root uh, name being, we don't know what the flag name is. So find us a flag. All right, there we go. So it's in OPT. Cat slash OPT slash dot flag. All right, so we got in with log for shell for J. It's very easy to exploit. It's one of the easiest exploits out there. If, once you get the workflow and you know how to test for it, it's super, super simple. All right. That was our first flag. What is the real root flag? Well, since we are inside of a Docker container, uh, we can assume this is not going to work very well for us. So we need to find the real root flag. So there's a few things that we can do when we're inside of a Docker container. Can I clear? Yeah, I can. Let's minus LA. Do we have another? We do have a mount here. Okay. Let's see if we can escape Docker container like we did last week. All right. I also have uh, this here, Hectrix Docker Breakout. It will explain here like, hey, if you get into Docker, first you can try to see if you can find mounted sockets. Uh, in this case, if it's running with a privileged flag or if it's, you're mounting any file system, it, it will make your life uh, easier here. So let's first check using fdisk minus L. Minus L. Sure enough, it looks like we do have uh, mounts here within the container. Uh, what you're looking at is the size of these mounts. And this is a 40 gig mount. Uh, that's a big, that's quite a big mount. Either they are running big files here or that's the whole file system, which is a very big blunder. You don't mount your whole file system inside of your Docker. And if you do, that would be bad news. So let's mount this thing here. So this is, this is just showing us how, which disks are available, not mounts. <laughs> then of course, um, make a directory. I'm going to make mine in the temp directory. So it's TMP mount cd such tm mount 
pwd the in there okay so far it's empty if i do an ls here you notice that it, there's nothing in there let's see if we can now mount in fact we know it's a file system because it's boot star so this is actually the file system this might be easier so we need to say mount the name of the file share to our file share okay so it's mount mount the file system to such temp such mount which is kind of silly because now we just mounted the whole file system okay cd mount remember last time when i did an ls we had nothing now we have everything this looks like a linux file system too ls minus la yeah, this looks like a Linux file system. This is not the container. This is the main system, and it's owned by root. All right. So the easiest one is, of course, let's see, shadow. <laughs> and of course, as, as you can see here, we have root, but we have this one for Vagrant. So we can steal this password hash here and try to see if we can crack it using John. If we really wanted to sign in, this is what we'll do. We just get this hash here and crack it if we can read everything in the file system why even bother cracking the hash we are already in the system we can do what we want here we can even echo a new user but we can we we store a user hash there so ls again cd slash root no 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 cd root not slash if i do an ls Really? Cat root the text. Okay, so we're being trolled. This is not the um, flag. Okay, find slash so tmp mount name star flag star. I don't know what I was doing there. All right, we are searching. Let's give it a moment. All right, it looks like we're not finding it. Is it not even named flag? Okay, so it looks like the find command doesn't want to work. So ls minus la, cd search root, ls minus la. We're just going to poke around here. Of course, we have a .ssh file uh, folder, and this is the one that showed us earlier. If you look closely, it, I spent so much time here not finding this flag. I was kind of getting frustrated. We have another directory here that is funny looking. Usually, you only get two dots instead of three, like in a normal Linux file system like here, you only get two dots, like that. This time, we get three. So the person went to great lengths to try to trick us. This is actually a directory. So if we do cd123, pwd, see where we are, ls minus la in there, of course, they even changed. Uh, I could have, I could have found this by searching for non-case sensitive flag. Was they put this here, knowing that we will be doing this, things like this? Okay, so let's cut this this flag. That's our uh, next flag. All right, that was kind of fun. Don't expose your file system to Docker containers, and of course, we got it. So that was it. Thanks for being here. Please remember to like and subscribe. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon. Thanks.